Come on, Rube. Boy, 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 boy. Ha! Oh, YouTube. I'm so sorry. This is my husband, and today I'm gonna show you how to clean up the short person's hair in your life. Ooh. These are some tips to clean up your uh, friend or your partner's haircut between salon visits without messing anything up. This is my husband. If you haven't met him, his name is Mark. Um, and he's here and he's queer and he's really being sweet to let us use him as a model today. He's got a little bit of like neck, uh, some extra neck stuff happening. Um, he's got a little bit of bulk on his sides. We've got a little bit of extra length here that we want to clean up. And then also this is a little bit bulky and typically he has a little bit more motion in it, but it's a little flat. Okay, ready? Let's go. First thing you're going to want to have is a cape to keep the hair from getting everywhere. This is important. Let's talk tools. So these are really convenient for sectioning short hair to clean up his sides. This is called a recession. And so typically you want to cut the sides starting at like the bottom of the recession. So it's like right here at the bottom of that C. So, but when you have really short hair, sometimes the clips don't like to stay. So I really like these little things. Then I'm gonna use scissors. You also could use um, clippers. One place that's really nice to tidy up is this stuff around the face. And what you can do is come in and you use this hairline as your guide, which is almost kind of like another C. And so you comb it forward and you see right here, like there's a few hairs that are sticking over this line that I just cut. So you're gonna comb it forward again and just trim those up. So that's already starting to look a little cleaner. Then I'm just gonna clean up this hair that's starting to come around his ears. One way to protect their ear is to comb down and then use your pinky to kind of protect the ear from any cuts. And then I'm gonna come behind his ear and I'm gonna get all this stuff. So you kind of comb it forward, cut, 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 cut. When you can start to get into a world of hurt when you're cutting hair at home and you don't know what you're doing because you're not a hairdresser, that typically happens like in here. So if you can stay more on the edges, which is typically where it looks a little messier anyway, that's safer, it's less risky, and you're still gonna get that benefit of like overall a tidier look without like needing to do your haircut faster because you just messed it up. We're trying to buy time, not have your hair up so you end up in the salon. Do you see what I'm saying? And then I'm gonna come to the other side and repeat the same thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the ear. You can see some of this hair that's starting to grow over his ear. So I'm just gonna Cut that. I think when you're working on yourself, it's especially on the ear, around the ears, a clipper is easier because uh, it's, you know, a little harder to do scissors like on yourself. I typically like how shears look because it's a little bit more soft, whereas clippers are more harsh. It's a little bit more of like a man-made line. And I find that when you do or shears, it stays longer. Like I feel like a barber, like that really sharp, like skin fade looks good for like a few days, maybe like a week. And then it are like, you got like a beard growing out of your like temple. I just, who has time for that? We're busy kitties out here in these streets. But I do like to do clippers on this hair in front of the ear when I'm doing it myself. Like even when I do my own cleanups, I'll do a little T-edger right here. And also do, do like a T-edger on my lips, on my neckline. The other truth is, is that when you have short hair, the finishing is all in the details. You can get like a really big change with small little details. Like you don't have to go in there and like grrr and like get all hardcore with it. And usually when you mess up your hair at home, it's because you went like too far. It is good to like, you can always take a little more off, but once it's gone, you're kind of messed up. So here's another good thing. Mark's hair typically, and a lot of people's hair gets bulky right behind the ear, like right here. There's a few things you can do to address that that I like to do. One is called channel cutting. So you can come in and you can take your scissors down and just making little vertical cuts. And you're not, I'm not going really deep up here. I'm really only just doing the very tip of my shears and I'm just detailing right behind his ear to take a little bit of that bulk out. Also, if someone has any puffiness on the sides, you could do the same thing. You could just come through and kind of 
gently remove a little bit of bulk. You don't want to be going like kirk kirk like really long. Like you want to do little or tiny little channels just to create some definition. Another thing you can do if you see extra hair is come in and just, I'm just going through and I'm just kind of point cutting into this bulky spot and see how that just mm, it lays it down. It's nice. It's just, sometimes you don't even need a full haircut. You just need to kind of debulk it. Let's talk about this hair. This is the moneymaker. This is like what everyone sees. And typically this hair grows a little bit faster on everyone, this hair than the rest does because we're like touching it more. It's just getting a little bit more action. And you can see that Mark's ends are a little bit ouchies and gardening a lot. It's just a little bit like, uh, it's a little crispy. <laughs> So I'm just going to come in and because I don't want to make like a dumb and dumber, like hardcore line, I'm going to point cut into this. So see, I'm not going like this and making a hard line. I'm doing like keeping it nice and soft. And then I'm just going to take another section, comb it forward and see if there's anything that's longer than what I just cut. And I can see that there is, but see how nice, like just taking that little bit of extra length off is, it just kind of lifts it back up. When our hair is getting a little bit finer, maybe you have a, maybe you have more fineness on your hair. Maybe there's like a little bit less hair right here than there is right here. And so sometimes what happens with that is, is you need to blend the fineness of this with the thickness of this so that it doesn't look particularly fine here. So you can kind of blend those sections together and then you can cut into the hair that's like a little bit more full to like blend it in. So like right here, you know, there's a little bit of extra bulk. So I can come in and just gently do a little bit of that channel cutting right here. I'm not going like cut, 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 cut. You know what I'm saying? It's like little teeny tiny controlled cuts. You want to be intentional. Now I'm just going to look at the back of his hair. It could just use a little bit of um, debulking to make his haircut last, you know, another couple weeks till he gets it really done. So you want to kind of comb it into the space where it lives typically. And this is, you know, how Mark's hair typically lives. And I'm going to do that little slide cutting thing. It's going to be, so again, notice I'm not going whack, 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 whack. I'm doing really tiny little like cut, cut. And I'm staying a little bit more on the surface of his hair. I'm not going all the way down to the scalp. So look at how this hair looks now. See how it's a little bit more bulky. It's got a little bit of like a bevel to it. So I'm gonna make this, this round a little bit more square by shattering it. So I'm just going to go through and just do that little channel cutting where it's getting a little bit round. I think the mistakes that people usually make when they try to cut their hair at home or do cleanups at home is they just get too scissor happy, like going really deep into the scalp, doing huge big cuts and doing a lot of big cuts without checking to see what you just did. So there was a lot of roundness, right? Right here. And what I'm working on is to remove that. So another thing you could do to shatter that out is just come in and do some very intentional little I call it like shark teeth. You're almost like cutting little shark teeth into the section. The thinning shear, if you don't know, it looks like this. It has these little teeth. Sometimes people can go a little bit kooky with thinning shears. So be careful with the thinning shear if you're not a pro. This is a good example. Right here, he, Mark's got a little bit of like thickness right here that I want to take out. So notice, I'm going to take the, the scissors at a diagonal. I'm not going vertical. I'm not going horizontal. I'm going diagonal and I'm only taking the bulk out of his very ends, not going super deep. You have questions, Mark? I was going to say, is there pros or cons against cutting it dry versus wet? I like for a cleanup to really do your hair to do it dry because you're going to see how the hair is going to lay. But when your hair is wet, it stretches and you don't wear your hair when it's wet. You, you know, wear it dry. So when you're trying to detail the hair and make sure that it's, you know, going to look good, you do want to finish it on dry hair, I think, is always better. This is called a feather razor. Pretty sure you can buy one if you're not a hairdresser. Light touch is important. It's not a straight razor. It's a feather razor. So it is a little bit, this guard makes it a little safer. Look down for me. I'm just going to clean his neck up. See how he's got a lot of this 
hair happening outside of this is his hairline. I want to take all this little extra hair off that's not in his hairline. Fun story. Mark's mom is a hairdresser. There was always just a giant bag of hair stuff. She had a razor and it had like a comb attachment to it. And I didn't realize it had a razor in it. And I went to like comb my hair and then like just went straight from the top and just combed it. And then like this giant like waft of hair just like sliced off. But generally my mom hated cutting my hair because it's so thick, my hair. And she's always like, I need to get our makeup, get our makeup. I hate cutting your hair. So she used to send me out to get my hair cut. A few notes on the feather razor. You can also detail with this sucker, but not all hair likes to be detailed with the razor. So one way you can test is like, just do a little bit. And if your hair like goes, <laughs> it didn't like it. If it kind of like lays better and you're like, ooh, that's laying nice, then it likes it. So that's a good way to test it. You're kind of using this part of the razor to detail. So you'll come into a section and see I'm going vertically and I go boop, 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 boop. That's just like, if you want to de see how like it makes this more like fingery texture. You can go like boop, 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 boop. Just to like, if you want to detail something or create like a little bit of lift or separation. That looks nice, right? Do you love, do you see the difference? Cute, right? Are you obsessed? You are right, you. You um, love, it's different, yeah, right? It it's like, you totally see, yeah. <laughs> Mark has like kind of like combo hair. It's, it's really thick on the sides and the back. It's really thick on top. It's a little tiny bit finer on his hairline. So sometimes I want to blend. If your hair is finer all over, blood cuts are better. If your hair is really thick, you want to kind of blend and debulk a little bit. In Mark's case, I was more uh, debulking and blending on the sides and the back. This I kept a little bit more blunt. I didn't really cut into this hair because it does better a little bit fuller. It's like if you want to grow your hair out, but it's just bulky, this is a great option. You can just clean up your edges, you know, clean up the perimeter of the haircut, the hairlines, take some of that bulk out, but don't really take off overall length. It's a good trick. Clippers. I'm going to use clippers on Mark's sideburns area to kind of to clean this part up and blend it into his beard. I'm using an eighth, a one eighth millimeter guard um, and watch this. So when I take this and I go down on his beard, it's going to take less hair off. So I'm going down. And the other thing about this is I'm only working between here and here of Mark's ear from like the top of the lobe to the bottom of the lobe. I'm not going here. I'm not going here. I'm going between here and here. Okay, so it's about an inch. So I'm going to go down on it first because this leaves more length. So down first. Then now watch this. When you go up, it's going to take off a lot more. See that? So, but look at how nice that is. And now look at this side that we haven't done. See how much cleaner that looks? Okay, so now I'm gonna do this side. So I'm gonna go down first, go up, and then I'm gonna make my C away. C away. Clippers down and blend that into the rest of his beard, just very small. I'm not going way down, I'm just blending this one little part. And I also like to use the earlobes as my kind of landscape or like my like marker. So instead of going like this, this, that like balance, just balance it to the top of the earlobe and the top of the earlobe. So I'm happy with this. Does it feel a little less bulky to you, Mark? Yeah. Much better, especially like the back bit feels much better. Yes! <laughs> you muscly queen. Um, thanks for coming to our YouTube channel. I hope you learned some gorgeous tips to clean up that short haircut in your life. Maybe it's your own, maybe it's someone you love. I don't know. See you next time on YouTube. We love you. We'll see you next time. If you liked this video, then don't forget to watch our other videos and like and subscribe. Uh.